What's up guys? Uh, it's your favorite YouTuber here. It's your boy Tommy Raps. Here I am with the YouTuber ever, Wendigoon. What's up? Hello, hello gamers. How is everybody doing? We don't give a- why are you asking how they're doing? We don't care how they're doing. We care about <laughs> making money off them. We you're, care about- you're right, you're We, right, we yeah. care about well, squeezing I, them dry. How are we supposed to get them to buy Magic no, Spoon? We gotta tell them we care about them, okay? We gotta tell them we care about them. Are you in the build mode? Do you know how to build? I don't know how to build. Oh, oh we can we can leave. We can not go to build. I think we should Hold just on. do uh whatever the no, the no build. Yeah, kids mode. There yeah, we go. yeah. Kids yeah, mode. Don't worry. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> do you, you. Do you? You're not telling me you actually build. You build. You're telling me you build. No, I, I don't build. I'm not good enough to do that. I just like killing people. Oh, you like people who deal build? Okay, like when I drive my car yeah, through yeah. like uh, a construction zone and take out a few. Right. People. That's what I'm trying to say. In yeah. Fortnite. <laughs> in the Fortnite in the yeah. Fortnite WRX. <laughs> hey guys, it's me, Wendigoon. Today we're gonna be taking a look at some dark and mysterious content. Number ten. <laughs> My is mom. that your impression of me? My mom is one of the darkest and most mysterious people I've ever met. One time <laughs> Me mom got arrested for vehicular side in Fortnite. <laughs> one time my mom put me in jail because she found my booger wall. We all got a booger wall in the South, but apparently as soon as I do it, I'm a bad boy. That's my impression of you. Oh, thanks. I say that because my little brother, he did have a booger wall. What the heck? A booger wall? Yeah, he had a booger wall. Is that what I think it is? It's just a wall where you just, it was next to his bed. So he would just write, he would just pick his nose and wipe his booger there. And so he had a wall of boogers. Wasn't there a streamer who like posted a picture is like, ah, the room I grew up in, I've come so far. It's Asmund Gold. It's Asmund Gold. Yeah, okay. yes. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Asmund like, Gold was like, the yeah, they were like, what's that blood? He was like, oh, well, my teeth bleed in the morning, so I wipe the blood there. <laughs> Just like so crazy, and you know he's telling the truth because if you look at his mouth, he's missing teeth on like one half of his mouth. Oh, I mean, listen, no, oh. no real hate to Asmongold, but the guy looks straight out of Skyrim. He looks like a Nordic peasant or something. Like he, he looks, <laughs> he looks, he looks, he looks straight out of 1492. You know what I'm saying? Or even before, he looks straight out of the Dark Ages, 1192. Okay, the guy was a peasant in Ireland or, or something. Okay, he's, he was a serf. He's a uh, Twitch streamer, right? He is a Twitch streamer, yeah. Super famous. Okay. Super, super famous. Yeah, I I'm really dumb to, like, streaming content because I don't really watch it any. So I only, like, know of the top dogs. Like, you know, him, Pokimane, Hassan, stuff like that. It's the mostly that way for me as well. But uh, unfortunately, I, I, I partake in watching the, the genre known as, like, Twitch and, like, YouTube politics, which means I know all the people with, like, 1,000 followers because they say crazy shit. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, you, you watch Destiny and stuff too, right? Yeah, I'm a big Destiny head. Actually, the other day I got jump scared. He has this show called Kick or Keep on Kick.com. It's like his, mm. his show because he got a contract there. And it's just like a panel show where he like has different topics. It's like a discussion show. He's like, discuss this. It's, mo it's not all like serious. A lot of it's comedic. But uh, out of nowhere, he was like, I want to do an episode with uh, all the guys like Turkey Tom. And I was like, Whoa. No. and I've like talked to him before. Oh. But it just it, like when someone says the name Turkey Tom out loud, I get caught off guard because I have to be reminded that that's the name I chose for my YouTube channel forever. And it's just like, <laughs> that's my chosen title. Turkey, I know the like feel, the most ridiculous the thing ever. Like you think I make videos for children okay okay you know the feeling you have like a cool name like it's a cool name and plus you're culturally appropriating native americans which is based meanwhile me meanwhile me is just like turkey tom like i hear squilliam say it every time it's just like what the hell <laughs> we went to the destiny show does he know that uh you were there i don't like think he does augie like hung out with him the morning after so maybe he said something but i don't think he does now yeah that was fun though that was an interesting <laughs> the first time meeting you we were like let's go see oh, destiny yeah. <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> well it's like uh, i was looking for an excuse and you're like hey i'm gonna be around there because destiny's who was the guy he was even debating it was uh elijah schaefer who formerly was of the blaze and i think he's left since then because he was accused of sexual harassment uh oh <laughs> oh but yeah so that's that's who he was debating it was I like, like an entertaining conversation though like i was glad i'm glad i went uh even apart from seeing you which was obviously the highlight because i got to see my e-boyfriend oh. for the first time oh. um but Dude. uh it was a worthwhile event to see and it wasn't that long and also the yeah. people who like asked them questions were really funny. Like there's this like fat bearded dude with like uh, no hair on his head. He was like, what are we going to bring up the sword and take action? And we're like, oh, holy. Oh, shit. yeah. I forgot about that guy. That was really oh, good. God, no. You were too ambitious. What the hell? I was far too ambitious. I got one kill. All right, we're good. I'm coming up. We're going to save you. Good luck, Turkey Tom. Retribution. This is my retribution. My but no, world. it's it's. 
I know the feeling about like uh, hearing people say your name or whatnot. I still get weirded out every time I hear Wendigoon. You probably get recognized a lot, especially. I do get recognized uh, more and more often. For a while, it was like, oh, this is so cool and fun or whatever. And still enjoyable. I'm not saying I don't like it when people or whatever but it happens often enough now where i gotta i, I gotta like be ready for it because i get caught off guard way too much mm -hmm. uh the other day like i went to <laughs> i went to get a snow cone actually and it was funny there's this kid back there looked to be a in high school or something and he comes up to take my order and he slides open the door and goes welcome to chili's and he does it like <laughs> full confidence and i thought he was joking so i start laughing and he goes i'm so sorry this isn't a chili's and everyone else in line starts laughing and he kept saying sorry which made me laugh more so he was like strange the whole time he kept dropping stuff like fumbling around oh, and then after kid. he hands me this after he hands me the snow cone, he's like, so do you like, um, do YouTube or anything? And it was, it wasn't until he said that I was like, oh, he's nervous. Up yeah. until then, I'm just like, this is just a, a weird guy who's thinking about chilies. Well, it is a weird thing because they never <laughs> expect to see, like, you in real life. So when they do, they're like, is that him? Like, am I going to accuse some random, like, dude of being Wendigoon? And they'll be like, <laughs> who the f*** is that, you know? Which is something I do sometimes. People will recognize you and I'll be like, who's that? And then usually, <laughs> and, then, and usually I don't like, I don't do it forever. I do it for a second. They're like, uh, he's just this, n never mind. They get nervous. And I'm like, nah, I'm just playing foo. You know what it is. You know, I'm glad you like my raps and rhyme rhymes and shit. you know, we make it out the hood and shit. Oh, uh, uh. but yeah, I've been getting recognized more now that I show my face. I was in Boston not that long ago with Frank Hassel and we were in Boston Commons, which is like kind of the equivalent of like, uh, what's the park? Central Park in New York City, just a big park. And just this random like dude, he looked like he might've been 35 or something. Just like walked up to me and was like, yo, you're Turkey Dom. And I was like, hey, what's up, man? So, you know, it does happen. Like when I go to the grocery store, sometimes I get recognized, stuff like that, just like randomly, which is strange. You know, it's usually a flattering experience. It's cool to meet people who like watch my stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's And especially because like, you know, it's weird because I have a disconnect. It's not just like my audience, but it feels like my success is a strong word, but like my platform sometimes. Yeah. You know, I, I make videos by myself, you know, it's mostly in-house. I have like my friend who edits and stuff. So I just keep posting and never really think about it. And then when you go out in public and someone recognizes you, it's like, oh yeah, people watch these. Right. Yeah. It's not just on the screen. No. Yeah, that definitely is like a kind of sobering, hum humbling experience to realize that for all those people you meet, like, like say you meet like one or two in like a week or something, right? They're yeah. two out of like, you know, for you, it's like what, two million or something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And those are all people who could conceivably recognize you at some point, just like out, which is wild. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, they're out there, they're lurking. <laughs> they're lurking in the shadows, ready to pounce at any given moment and show you their poopy diaper. I'll have, I'll have some people walk up to me and they'll like get my attention and they're like, oh, sorry, I thought you were someone else. And they'll like walk away. It happens too often that's just people thinking I'm someone else. So I think there's some people who are like, that's Windigoon, and then they get close and they're like, no, it's not. You also don't want to be, <laughs> my inclination in there because of social dynamics between friends and stuff, be like, oh no, I'm that guy. But then it's like, no, that's incredibly self absorbed a little bit <laughs> to look at, yeah to be like oh no I, i'm who you think i am well it's I kind of uh you do look different in person than on camera you look like almost the same but the camera makes you look rounder and in person you look more statuesque i would say and i don't know what it is maybe oh. there's like a fish eye on your thing but i remember bailey like we, we met and he was like you know he looks good and i was like what do you mean he was like he just looks good he looks rounder on camera, and I was like, I think you raised a good point. He does a little bit. He looks rounder on camera. <laughs> I think it has every camera, uh, it does it to me too. It has sort of a stewieing effect where it makes your features look different. Like Stewie from Family Guy, because his head is like, yeah, a, like literally, an oval. Not fat, literally around, <laughs> rotund. <laughs> yeah. But in person, I, that you're is like, true uh, now that you say that. Also, you're like, I forget you're like my age. In my head, you're like five years older than me. You're like, what, 20? Four, three? I'm 24, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you are like five years old. Well, three. Three years older than me. In my head, like, because you, you you, have like the style of like a 30-year-old man. So I think that uh, <laughs> in, in my head, I perceive you as being like way older. Also, you're just like mature. You're like a mature person. Whereas like, I just sent you a gif of Talking Tom like pooping, which is like yeah. cool. Yeah, well, that that's just to be expected. I don't think that's indicative of my age group as much as it's indicative of you. <laughs> yeah, it is. That is, that's true. That is just me. That is, that <laughs> I, I is think really you're just, just like that. You're raising a good <laughs> I am just like that.
that. My style's mostly just because I like wanted to be unique or whatever. And I'd always liked, I'd always just wore Hawaiian shirts and stuff like that. Cause I thought they were a lot more interesting than just, you know, plain clothes, collar, whatever. So when I started making YouTube videos, I was like, oh, uh, I'll just wear some Hawaiian shirts. And then that became like my whole thing. It's definitely so. good to have a style. Cause I feel like now, like literally everybody's just wearing like a band shirt every day or like a branded yeah. Thing. Like nobody, like, like, I feel like it's rare to see someone that's not wearing a shirt that has some kind of like interest expressed on it. Like everyone's trying to show their personality through their shirts. And I'm guilty of this because I only yeah. wear band yeah. tees. But that's the thing for everyone. And also just having a personal style for YouTube is good for branding because then it's like, oh, it's recognizable, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like people, it's enough of a brand that people kind of related to stuff. Like the number of times I'm tagged on Twitter because there's like a man with a beard and a Hawaiian shirt and they're like, oh, Windagoon spotted? Is this Windagoon? Yeah, I know. I've seen mean? a lot of those. Like, people do that to Jay <laughs> Schlatt too. I always feel like I see memes of him. This guy's almost uh there, There's a guy. There we go. Got him. Oh, you got him. There's another uh, person. Are they in a tree? What the f***? Oh, right. Yeah, here. they're in a bush right there. <laughs> Your mom's. There we go. There you go. W Riz, my friend. Only in Ohio. <laughs> Only in Ohio. <laughs> Only in Ohio. <laughs> Only in Tennessee. Only in Appalachia. There you go. That's better. I'm literally <laughs> driving. It. I'm in Appalachia right now. Did you see there was this video someone did recently called like the poorest region in America and they went to like uh, rural Appalachia. I think mostly Virginia. Um, yeah, it was, Virginia. it was West Virginia, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was a great video. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, super. I didn't see the video. Uh, I saw that. I actually know that town because uh, I've got family who live around that area. Uh, and I've been through it. It's 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 a it took an especially hard hit when the coal mines like shut down and stuff. So it's I mean it's like a lot of poor regions. There was economy there at one point, and then the economy left. You had a bunch of people who weren't able to live you know, at a certain level of means. It's uh, similar like that in Detroit, you know, because like the automotive industry was huge. No one had jobs there, but then that couldn't sustain the population. So now you have people in a society that is well beyond their means and they can't afford it. Uh, similar stuff happens a lot in the South. It's just with lesser population, so it doesn't get talked about as much. Right. Yeah, I feel like nobody talks about like um, like Midwestern or like rural poverty for the most part. It's only like inner city poverty, which I guess there are like probably technically more people there but you know it's good to hear good to hear from the other groups as well yeah it's, it's like that and i watched buckingham's video about yeah. baltimore that was an awesome video yeah that was a great video he's a yeah super super talented creator hopefully you guys get to meet sometime i don't think you have but he's he's super good oh, he does oh i'd love to meet that guy i'm especially like i'm so impressed with him because he's making the kind of videos i'm like oh man i'd love to do that but this guy just like started there yeah. <laughs> like he doesn't know anywhere to be but up that's how it is for me. It's like I was talking to him. He was like explaining to me sometimes he's kind of like envious of like people who can just sit in their bedroom because all his videos, he has to like travel to some weird f***ed up place. Yeah, yeah. We were thinking of um doing a video. I can't. Uh, oh, the place is called uh, Nunavut. Are you familiar with Nunavut? Nunavut. Uh, I don't think so. So Nunavut is like the northernmost point in Canada, and Canada is like huge. So it's basically like Antarctica. It's super cold up there. You can't get anything up there. I think the plane ride is like like from where I am. It's like six hours or something, or like seven hours. Oh, okay. It, um, like north, straight up north. It's super expensive yeah. to go there. To give an idea of how expensive things are there, I think that uh, a case of water, like normal, like, you know, 24 pack of Poland Spring or whatever, is like $100 USD, which is like insane. Uh, and it's just just because they can't get anything up there, so it's so expensive. Bacon, yeah. like a thing of bacon is like $40. Like the, the prices are crazy. And I think it would be interesting to film up there just because it's like the largest, I think as far as I know, it's the largest like native population. Uh, they've basically just been there for, the, you know, the entire existence of Canada and, you know, all the North American yeah. immigration. Nobody just, just, nobody really went there because there's nothing really up there. But there's, I think, 13,000 people living there. And I think it would be a really interesting video. But it would the, be a fascinating video. It would be. The problem you know, uh, comes like, first of all, marketing it. Like, how do you convince people to watch that? You can get creative, but it's also like, nobody's ever heard of this place. Maybe that's yeah. kind of a kind of thing in his favor, but you know, we'd have to get creative. Secondly, budget, like to get there, a plane ride for like one ticket is like $2,000. Wow. Just cause nobody goes there. And you're not flying like a large airliner. You're flying like a little Cessna. I think you might get lucky sometimes if you're flying like once a week, maybe they have like a bigger flight, but it's not a super common thing, but I think it would be, it would be a cool video to do at some point. And that's something I'm playing around with too. I want to do more more uh, documentary type videos with people like like a gross gore like lol cows where I I do the Shane Dawson yeah. thing where I go to film them but I don't do the Shane Dawson thing where I want to have sex with cats and kiss 12 year olds at conventions so that would mm, be the idea understandable 
yeah, it's obviously, you know, to each their own. Um, but <laughs> uh, Shane, I was looking back at the old Shane documentaries or whatever, and, like, they're corny, and, like, the editing is, like, funny, and, like, he is, you know, him, but they're, like, good videos. Like, he made good videos. There's no doubt about it. Oh, yeah, it. yeah. The guy, the guy made great content. It made me upset because the first video of his I ever watched was his conspiracy theory video, oh, uh, which yeah. I think I've talked to you about before, but it made me so upset. It's one of the reasons I started YouTube, so thank you, Shane. I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that, like, it was just, like, super frustrating as someone who knows about it because he's so surface level my gosh br bro like i've talked about other stuff before but that video made me so furious because he's like uh did you know that brands will use colors to make you look at them and buy their product it's like this this is marketing what do you mean this is and, and this, this sounds so obvious but it's like to a lot of people that is like shocking for some reason i guess like just the fact that brands will use psychology maybe um, that maybe that's what it is maybe it's just like no offense but normie content i mean I I assume it's like just the lowest common denominator of person who's not familiar with like the internet or isn't like media literate like a lot of people now are. I assume it's just yeah. that situation where it's like, oh, well, this is a conspiracy video. Top 10 yeah, conspiracies. Just... Number 10, brushing your teeth <laughs> is actually good for you. Like that level of <laughs> that's pretty much what it is yeah these people ain't ready for the hyperbore hyperbore uh, alternate history exactly <laughs> yeah. some of the learned about mcdonald's some of the first content <laughs> i watched on conspiracies was from a channel called top 10 facts back in the day that turned into a channel called lemon which i'm sure you watch oh um, yeah yeah but he used to do like he did like top 10 facts illuminati and it would be like just like a super simple video about the illuminati that yeah. guy in like uh back in the day a classic was danger dolan uh way back i remember dolan Yep. Yeah, they they both like you know pretty service level stuff, but like for someone getting into like YouTube and the internet in general, like it was it was pretty useful info to have, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I've I've always loved their content. I really like uh, where Lemino is now, especially like he came out with a video two days ago, I think, about uh, JFK. It's specifically from the point of view of the book depository building, like the events around Oswald. Right. Uh, and it's a very well made video. I don't agree with a lot of his takeaways and stuff, but the video itself was objectively very well made. I liked it. Yeah, I watched about half of that. It was great um, last night. But um, yeah, the visuals he has are always like super above and beyond as well, which is really, I mean, oh, it's, they're it's, so good, it's not necessary, but it's nice to see someone who is like a nerd about that stuff and just goes the extra mile, right? Yeah, like my content is very low bar. Just like look at something, throw up a picture every now and then. Uh, but to see someone who like puts up full blown diagrams, charts and whatnot, very, very refreshing to see. I feel um, like for your stuff, it works, bunch though. I feel like that's kind of the appeal of it. It's like it doesn't feel pretentious. It feels like someone. It feels like you're talking to someone who's like you know you know your your knowledgeable nerdy friend who knows about this stuff. Oh well, I appreciate that. It's I kind of lucked into it because I just like when I started making YouTube videos, I didn't have the means or faculty to make stuff on par with like what Nextbo was doing. I was just recording off my you know iPhone camera. So I was like, oh, I'll just make it a very casual kind of sit down thing, and people like that enough that now <laughs> there isn't a high bar for content. <laughs> now I could just kind of take it easy. Was that a conscious, um, like, cynical which, thing at all when you were doing that? Like, was it like, oh, this is, like, kind of easy? Or was it just like, this is the tools I have to work with, I'm just going to do it? it? It was, this is the tools I have to work with. I always had the idea that maybe one day I could do something, like, oh, when I get better at this, I can make higher brow content or whatever. Uh, but now, like, people just like the style. Uh, I enjoy making videos that way. But it was literally just because I had no experience editing, recording, uh, audio, <laughs> none of it. I just wanted to start talking about weird stories I found. I think it's to the point uh, now so where the if only... you did change it, like, I feel like people wouldn't like it. I don't think they would either. I've done small things to try to incorporate it, and I actually have a video I'm working on right now that's going to be more technical or, like, more, like, literal technicalities than my normal stuff. So I'll kind of see how people respond to that. But, yeah, a lot of people just kind of like the idea that it's a, a set down or whatever, which, I got, again, got to say, very convenient for, for me yeah, <laughs> to not have to work that hard. But I, I'm great. I'm grateful for my audience who's willing to put up with my lowbrow content. <laughs> I would just say I would just say lowbrow. I'd say you're out of the out of the like conspiracy. I don't know what you call it. Dark content. Like you're mainly the one that I watch. Uh, out of the others, like I oh. watch one one once in a while. But with you, it's consistent. Okay, every week or every other week these that's days. That's very that's yeah. very kind. I sit down. Appreciate I get that. naked. I butter myself up, and I get ready to turn yeah, the video on yeah. mute and yeah. masturbate for two hours straight. <laughs> 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 which is great, which is great. It's a great experience, so I appreciate yeah, you Just like I told you to, yeah. Just like you directed me to in the DMs, which is yeah, how I get paid on YouTube, because I make zero money from ads. Yeah, if, if, you, if you ever want to see your family again, just, just keep it up. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying. I'm getting there. Hopefully in a few years. Hopefully in a few years, I'll be able to see them for five minutes. Um... <laughs>
<laughs> awesome, awesome. Do you keep up with a? Uh, I assume if you watch my stuff, you keep up with like drama, current events a little bit, just a little bit. Honestly, uh, I mostly keep up with it once you make a video on it. Like, gotcha. I don't That's really keep up with the drama itself, but if I see Tom did something, I'm like, oh, well, I'm watching this video. But pretty much the length of drama I keep up with is what you and other commentary channels cover. It's over. We lost, it's over, right. we're yep. not back. 1776 will never commence. Okay, I believe in you, I believe in you. You're American Sniper, you're Bradley Cooper. You're going to the gun range with your friend. You're doing the right thing. There's insurgents that you can't see. They're in your head. They're real. They're real. They're though. in your head. They're in your head. They're real, though. All right, that's another down. Oh, right on me. Right on me. Cranking 90s. Come on, I believe in you. Hey, got that oh, team. my God. Uh, one there's, left. there's people behind this uh, crate. There's two of them back there. One of them's chug jugging. Oh, they're trying to heal up. I, right, I, need, to I need to reposition. They're sucking that juice, that dang juice. Right, that's one knocked. Ah, dang it. Well. Ah. <laughs> Listen, we were close. Oh, that's so That's better. Sixth so place. Close. Last time we got like oh. what a hundredth, so I feel like this is yeah, a so... marginal improvement. <laughs> like I'm, pr I'm proud. We're working on what it. What does that mean, cranking nineties? Can anybody explain this to me? Well, uh, I'm gonna run to the bathroom for one second. I'll be right back. All right, all right. Voices Drink in my head. Can you explain what cranking nineties means? Oh, it means that. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. No, I haven't thought about that in a while. Actually, I've been trying to not um to not think about that too much. I feel like it's um you know kind of bad kind of bad to have those kind of ideations i feel like i just you know i push them deep down no i don't have a therapist i don't have a therapist but it's it's not a big deal you think i should no what are they going to do what they go they went to some school for four years they're going to tell me that you know i need help or something like they're going to tell me you know thinking about doing that to you know a massive number of people is a bad idea i feel like i just don't i just don't need that kind of counseling like i feel like i'm fine on my own i can okay I can i'm back it, I can handle it oh hey there you go all right just in time for the voices to stop talking how's it going buddy <laughs> it's going good i know that's very lame to leave in the middle of a no don't but, worry about it don't uh, worry about <laughs> it um don't worry about it just you don't need to know what we talked about when you're back. Um, okay. All right, we're back. We're gaming. Yeah, I've actually, I actually have to piss too, but I'm gonna hold it as long as possible until I piss on the floor, so you can see it on video. I appreciate that. Awesome. How long have you been playing Fortnite? Are you a real Fortnite gamer? I've been playing probably a couple weeks. Maybe three. Well, maybe like four weeks. So my uh, fiance Kayla, she always likes to play like cutesy little like you know Animal Crossing games or whatever, right. and I just play shooters. So she saw her friend played Fortnite, so she wanted to try it. So for a few weeks, uh, we've been been playing it together and i've been playing it just because it's you oh. know, her and i can play it. so this is like a nice middle ground because it's like the soy shooter yeah yeah like she gets she gets to be like a little anime girl or whatever uh and learn call outs and <laughs> how to how to play against other teams that's and stuff sick. like that so that's good it is a good couple game i've tried to get kai into fortnite but so far she's only played on my computer but she's like left-handed so it's like completely fucked just like put the mouse on the other side <laughs> and click with like the left side of her left hand which is like, <laughs> just horrible but um she seems to like it. I think she likes the fact there's all these characters in it, which like I criticize soy yeah, stuff and then yeah. I see Bender in this game and I'm like, hmm. So it's like, <laughs> you know, do I really have, have much to speak on? I see Batman. Damn, I see I'm Mr. Beast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kayla, uh, she, one of the reasons she got into it, she, she likes uh, Attack on Titan and uh, oh. she watches some anime like that. Really? She saw that like Mikasa was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's into anime and stuff. Oh. Um, and she saw Mikasa from Attack on Titan was in it. She's like, I want to play so I can be Mikasa. Oh. <laughs> so that was like the incentive for her gotcha she doesn't strike me as an anime person that's interesting she is much more e-girl like internet personality than she lets on uh okay. the, the doctor the whole doctor smart lady thing covers up a lot of it she seems so normal uh, yeah yeah she seems like well she was kind of normal until i came along oh, you destroyed her life yeah going. that's common yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, typically, you know, we as YouTubers, we try to find vulnerable women to prey on and mold in our image to be horrible right. people. So yeah, yeah, just it's, it's you just, know. you know, she tries to get away and like, you know, call for help and her family and stuff. But it's like, that's not how it works. Yeah. You know, I mean, she, knew, she I mean, she, she knew the deal when she walked in my house and she saw the uh, the Fight Club poster, okay? She knew that she was going to be chained to my basement like Onision's girlfriend or whatever, okay? She right, knew. right. Mr. Beast, though, that guy's such a, like, a genius. I'm, like, obsessed with listening to his advice because he's, like... Really? Yeah, I listen to his, his like, podcast appearances all the time and because, like, he's he's so busy, the one time any YouTuber gets to talk to him, like, they always, like, want to ask, like, YouTube advice and, like, ask how he does it because so they can gleam a little bit and that guy's yeah. just, like, an endless wealth of, like, information, like, PewDiePie was like, he's really smart. He like captivated a generation, but I don't think he's as industrious as, as Mr. Beast. Yeah, I think PewDiePie was, I, I'm not saying this to any of his discredit, I like Felix, but yeah. a lot of right place, right time, you know? Definitely. Like and there, also- There wasn't a lot 
content out there for him to compete with. Mm -hmm. He also like um, it was just it was really just him. I mean, it's like him and his editor. Mr. Beast is like a yeah. hundred people, and the projects are like right. it's not. You know, PewDiePie did some classic videos that I love, but it's just not like I mean, even he would agree it's not like the like crazy one hundred million dollar yacht video versus a hundred dollar boat or stuff like that, or like curing kids with cancer, or you know, hitting kids with a cancer gun to see you know how much it hurts them and stuff like that. Like <laughs> right. this is these are just not like projects on that scale of stuff like one person can do, and I think it's really just Mr. Beast is just the go to that. But um, even apart from that, I think just in terms of like his his advice on YouTube and like creation in general and like running businesses is super useful. And I've, I've channeled a decent amount of his advice. Like he's my Andrew Tate, basically, I would say. <laughs> He's your alpha male. <laughs> I mean, he... He is. He's like, I don't use like extremely high IQ. I think he's extremely like industrious and like good at learning things and like open to new ideas. He really likes to conquer things and like get good at things, get good at new yeah. skills, learn things. And I think that that's like probably way more valuable than like raw, like high IQ. Cause I don't see myself as a particularly high IQ person, but I think like work ethic is probably more important, practically speaking. Yeah. That. Yeah. Like he, I agree as well that it, I think it's more important than just IQ. It, a lot of it, like being good at YouTube isn't just like having a good angle, you know, being a good storyteller making good videos whatever a lot of it's just your endurance factor you know yeah uh, dedication you're willing to put in and like that guy you, like you want to talk about someone who works like <laughs> round the clock yeah he basically he did a um he's, he's talked about this before he basically doesn't take days off like maybe every 10 days he'll take one off and then the next day he just gets right back to it for like 10 days and that's like rare yeah insane work ethic i've bro i've got like four I have not seen a single this person little, other than you, so. I, I have been sweating and clutching. You're like, yeah, Mr. Beast kind of like my Andrew Tate. He's like my. He is. He is. <laughs> Stay out over here. Okay, I'm just going to go there. I hit a, I broke their shield. <laughs> I'm with Wendigoon. He's my friend. We play Fortnite in our diapies. Oh. oh got him. W Riz. What's what's something the viewers need to hear about? Um, uh, what's been going on in the world? Oh. You're more in touch with like the YouTube politics no. and stuff than I am. We're talking what you're interested in. UFOs. Uh, there was like mm. a Senate hearing two hours ago where uh, there was like a whistleblower talking about how UFOs are real. I know this has been going on for a while, but um, I guess it's like a big a big deal now. Whatever he said. Have you been following this story of like these like ex government employees that are talking about the fact that there's like aliens that are like locked up? Oh yeah, the all that stuff about like the different military bases have had actionable intel on unidentified aircraft for a while there's the guys I, I know there's something about guys coming out saying that there is like they don't call them aliens so the, the word for it's like un undocumented life forms or something like yeah. that yeah yeah i've heard some stuff about that are you like super into the the ufo stuff or is that not like really your alley it's not I, like of course it's like in my area of content and stuff but but honestly it's not super in my area of interest mm. Which I feel like it should be, but for some, I just can't get into it. And I think the main reason for that is, to explain this, the existence of aliens, <laughs> this sounds almost pretentious to say. Is it like obvious? The existence of aliens. No, it doesn't change too much about my world or universal understanding or knowledge. Like, I don't believe in them, mainly because, like, I'm a Christian and stuff, and, like, I just not, like, accounted for in the Bible and stuff like that. But if they were to exist, like, there is actionable proof, I'd just be like, okay, like that, mm. that, that it doesn't, it doesn't change. I know some people are like, well, if aliens are real, then God isn't. It's like, what does that have to do? do with anything mm -hmm. i would just instead be like oh okay god made aliens and like that's cool what do they do what do they like do they want to kill us uh but it's not something that re like for example if it was something i'm more interested in epstein stuff right like yeah. you know government or see human trafficking that would immediately change things because then it's like you know world politics world relations is all being instrumented to protect the ring of criminals and like that that's something that i can manifest what i think it really is is i have no control or way to interact with it oh so, therefore right. it doesn't interest me as much if that makes sense that, that makes sounds a lot really of sense. no i mean that's, that's real because i mean even if it is true it's like what do we do? We like break into Area 51 and like get them out and then like do, Des yeah, do yeah. Despacito with them in Gangnam Style? Like, what are we supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> right. Whereas if it's like, oh, well, you know, your elected officials are files and it's like, okay, now that is something tangible, something I can do something about. Yeah. But not, yeah, not so much on the alien front. I, I, it's kind of like, what's that story? I think it was a story Freud told a lot, some psychologist, about like uh, the best position you can be in is to discover that you're responsible for all of your problems mm -hmm. because then you can do something about them. The worst discovery is that you're powerless to stop, you know, what is happening to you. Uh, and I, I don't know, for, 
for some reason, I kind of feel that way about aliens. Like, if they do exist, it's like, well, all right. <laughs> I mean, I feel that way about almost everything. It's like, whatever whatever you can affect, put mental energy towards, and whatever you can't, like, there's there's not a lot of use in, you know, putting any effort into it, unless it directly yeah, benefits yeah. you in some way. But but it is weird for me. I also have a conflict. Like, why, why am I not interested in aliens? And that does like, confuse me, because I feel like ghosts, I be. <laughs> like, and UFOs, like, there's a lot of overlap. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing with, like, ghosts and stuff like that, the paranormal, it relates to the realm of the spiritual, the realm of the, the divine, the after death and stuff like that something that i'm very in tuned with because i am a christian you know believe in afterlife god spirituality all that stuff so discoveries and thing in that regard are things i can interact with right and you know change about stuff whereas aliens it's just like if aliens exist or don't exist it's completely non sequitur to everything else i believe Whereas mm. existence of ghosts and the supernatural can be defining as to what I believe. Yeah, I guess that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's a good very, point. That's, that's a, a very pretentious way to say all that, but yeah. I feel like it's not that bad. pretentious. I think it makes sense, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a good answer, actually. So, uh, well, on that note, I guess my next question will be, can we, actually, can we talk about Pizzagate on YouTube? I don't know how deep. Can we go on that? Uh, you can go on it now because it's such a, uh, so like you couldn't talk about it before Epstein uh, okay. because it was like, oh, don't talk about it or whatever. But once it got like cycled by every news source in the world, it just became like, you know, mm -hmm. talk of the town. Okay. They quit caring as much, especially because there is so much misinfo out there that it's combined with that it's really kind of impossible to nail anything down per se. So yeah, they're fine with it. Yeah, that's a difficult situation. I've always found that stuff curious there's a there's this dude that got banned on youtube a long time ago he was i mean he was he was like straight up saying like hitler was a nice guy and they used to let the jews play soccer in the camps his name was malcolm mm -hmm. buddha oh uh, i've, heard, this, I've like, heard, of him. heard of him yeah he got sucked down this like alt-right kind of rabbit hole thing and he was saying crazy yeah. But um, over the past while, he's been making documentaries that are, um, I think they're only on like BitChute and like Patreon, but he basically only talks about like Pizzagate stuff, that kind of thing, Epstein. And he's super interesting, mm. but the thing that's more captivating to me that what he talks about is how he does it, because he's unironically like the greatest documentary filmmaker I think I've ever seen in my life. Really? His, his editing and like everything, like the music, he like scores it himself. Like he's so, he's so amazing. Um, but then he talks about like, you know, some of it may be real, some of it may not, but I feel like a lot of it's like kind of crack you know? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of it is. Uh, so when you deal with anything like that, that's kind of in the realm of the paranormal or whatnot, you're going to run into a ton of people who are, I mean, either grifting or they're just overzealous and stuff like that. I think that, you know, there is, I personally believe there's a realm of the supernatural of the unseen and whatnot, but how much crazy info is there about the supernatural, about stuff like that, that's just out of left field. And you're going to have that with anything, especially when you get into, you said, so Matthew Buddha still does stuff like that, still stuff done like alt-right content or whatever. I'd say he, he's away from the white nationalist stuff. It's really just talking about conspiracies at this point. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so, so like you're going to run into a ton of guys like that whenever you do try to go down the rabbit hole of, you know, yeah. Epstein or whatever. Honestly, it's to the degree that you are not in trouble on YouTube for talking about Epstein or whatever, you're in trouble because you're associating yourself with those kind of content. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes it's sense. It's not so much the subject matter as much as the politics around it that they care about it. Mm -hmm. Are you giving a like lot a, of grief from YouTube for talking about you know, stuff like that? Yeah, I, I haven't made like the Epstein video uh, or anything. I actually have tried to twice and both times ran into issues. Uh, one of them was right after Epstein died. I went to, I was going to make an Epstein video, but there honestly wasn't any good information yet. It was all just speculative and a bunch of, and a bunch of people like what you were talking about. They're just like, oh, this, this is how Epstein connects to these massive, you know, like um, multi-dimensional pyramid monsters or whatever. So I waited for info to come out. And then while I was waiting, John McAfee died. So I was right. like, oh, I'm going to make a John McAfee video. And I actually got some other YouTubers to collaborate on that. And they like sent me clips and stuff right and i was gonna make a mcafee video but then in research for it i came to the conclusion that i think mcafee actually killed himself yeah it's not like epstein where it was clearly a murder because i went into the mcafee video thinking ah oh, he was silenced i remember we uh, talked about that and i think at the time you had asked if i wanted to do a part in it and i i th yeah yeah i think what i may have said i don't remember but i think what i may have said is like if i do it i have to say that i think he did himself because i definitely think he did yeah yeah and that was an it, opinion it was that I stole from, um, I can't remember who, but I definitely stole it from someone else because I just like, I'm not smart enough to like come up with that on my own, but someone just said that in like a podcast or something and like reasoned it out. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. So I just stole that opinion. But a lot of those, <laughs> well, a, a like, lot of those conspiracy theories are so fun to walk down the line and be like, oh, he, you know, the government owned him. But 
I feel like right. most of the time a simpler explanation is usually the case. Yeah, well, it's, it's Occam's razor, you know. Like, uh, th some of the best advice I ever heard was never infuse for malice what can be explained with stupidity. Yeah, uh, that's true. And the, most of the time it is just like, oh, this is just the events that happened. Except for stuff like the MLK assassination. Like, that, that I firmly believe the government them mm -hmm. but it like there's the, the most of the time it is just the automatic so i go into this john mcafee video like oh, i'm going to prove that he was by the clintons or whatever and then in research like i said i came to the conclusion that this was just a very tortured man who took his own life right. um and that that made me walk my it was good that i had that early on in the channel or comparatively early on because it was the first time of me walking back myself thinking about how I, you know, explain perceived topics and stuff like that. It was a good break for me. I actually, but I kind I, of like, I, I kind of wish you had posted it. Um, not because I want you to get but because like, I kind of like when people post theories even if they're wrong, because it's just like cool to hear that. I mean, I'm sure you feel that way. Different ways to look. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, Lemino, like I don't agree with his video, but that was a fan. I don't agree with the points in his video, but that was a fantastic made video. Yeah. Um, and I like seeing stuff like that. I like hearing the other side. The main reason I, uh, I'm not saying that I think Lemino's malicious or anything like that. I've just viewed the same data he has and came to different conclusions. Well, I mean, yeah, but when you get in the uh, uh, like we were talking about Epstein and stuff like that. So I haven't like made a video on it. So I haven't got hounded by YouTube specifically, but I know a bunch of other creators who have made Epstein videos and stuff and they don't seem to have a problem again, because now it's such a it's just like a well known thing like Epstein was a child predator. The part where you get into hot water and you start implicating people. And I don't know if that's so much like you can say the Clintons went to Epstein's Island or whatever because that's, I imagine if you say Bill Clinton the child, you have a problem, right? You, you'll probably have a problem. Uh, YouTube will give you a problem. But at the same time, like if you say crazy stuff like that, like Hillary Clinton baby or like whatever that conspiracy theory was like the youtube is just kind of like oh he's crazy or whatever uh, like sure if enough people point at you they may take action but they're not as worried as they are about the, the typically when i see people get taken down not just on youtube but on the internet in general is when someone says something like oh well there's this shell company that was being used in the middle east that's actually a front for a money laundering operation connected to epstein and that's where that's where people typically run into legal issues so that's funny like you say that because that's basically like a mouthy booty video the most recent one i watched had a lot of like this shell company's tied to this shell company and uh yeah, you know, i mean yeah. I'm, like when you're watching it in a video form it makes a very convincing argument i'll admit like you know i'll watch it yeah. and I'll be like whoa and then you you know take a step back and maybe it's less convincing but yeah um, yeah and yeah. i mean most of the time like again like we said you know don't mistake from Alex what can be explained with ignorance most of, there are a ton of shell companies and stuff like that out there these like multi-billionaires use nine times out of ten it's to evade taxes yeah that's like what the, that's what we saw in the Panama Papers. We we all knew that they were getting by not paying the tax man, but we just saw specifically how they're doing it, and they do it by getting around legal loopholes of having money tied up in uh you know different accounts, having everything spread out, uh, and it's just kind of like common knowledge at this point. A lot of the time, what can, like sure maybe they're using this to smuggle children. It could also just be that they're trying to get out of paying some money. I mean, another thing like as far as the malice and stupidity thing, I think another argument that I I or Roy I like to live by is like generally like. Like, you, you can try to ascribe a lot of intentions, but the major intention for most people uh, in today's world is money. And they'll do a lot yeah, of things for yeah. money. So, um, yeah, and that's, you know, that can be unfortunate, but that is just kind of the reality of the world we live in. You know, you, you get more if you have more. So honestly, the worst atrocities that have ever been committed have been committed for wealth, either empires or, you know, g genocides and stuff like that. It's about control in some regard or the other. Even at a lower uh, no, level. Normally like, it doesn't go more than that. If, in my world, like when you're talking about like a YouTuber, like most of the time, if they do something it's it's probably for money if they do it in front of their audience i mean there are things they'll do behind the scenes maybe you know allegations of that sort that maybe are not are not for money that's uh definitely contributing to a lack of money but like like rice gum promoting mystery brand which is like this gambling site i covered back in the day just stuff like that it's like it's obvious the incentive is is always that coin i mean think about <laughs> we saw it with the crypto stuff that happened oh yeah like how many youtubers are willing to just lie through their teeth because there's cash involved Right. It's just, I gotta be cautious about everyone. Gotta be cautious about those med. Oh, Caleb scared me to death. Gotta be cautious about those uh, Magic Spoon sponsorships. Exactly. Yeah, you never know when the Magic Spoon rug pull is gonna happen. You never know when Magic Spoon's gonna launch an NFT scheme and they're gonna steal everyone's money. Exactly. Yeah, like, you know, money, money rules the world, right? Yes, it does. It does. My name is Wendigoon. I like to be the little spoon because when my was in the room, you know that dough is 
where um vroom that's my rap <laughs> your your rap career is really really taking, taking off, off i've been freestyling a lot lately i've been freestyling <laughs> I'm really going on. <laughs> the next Eminem. That was easy, like the most expensive thing I've done for like the least return in my life, like that rap video. Really? It was uh <laughs> to do the video and everything. It was like five thousand dollars or maybe six. <laughs> it was like for like for tipster. <laughs> like my life is just like a meme. It's just like a joke. <laughs> it's really funny. It's like I knew that going into it. So it was like. I was just like, no one's going to watch this. No one's going to care. But, like, it's just too funny to not do it. But now I have, like, way worse ideas in my head that, like, only I would find funny. And I'm like, how can I devise a way that I can spend $10,000 on something that only I will like that no one else will care about? Like, it's something, like, not even you would get. It would just be, you'd be like, this is And I'd be like, well, anyway, and now I have a, you know, basically a mortgage for this thing. Dude, you're in a dangerous place where your brain's like, the joke is spending a lot of money on something. It is hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. I was, um, so for the Bam Margera video, when I was like looking through like the script and stuff and learning about that, it's an interesting metric is that when he was, he had a TV show and at one point MTV was giving him like, I think like hundreds of thousands for every episode for the budget. So he could just like do something completely for every episode he was just inventing ways to spend money like what if i crash two cars like stuff like that or like yeah. i mean mr beast is someone who has access to that kind of budget where it's like you know there's really no limit for him for what he can do so he's the only limit is like what his mind can come up with really right. which is a scary place to be undoubtedly <laughs> Bam ended up, he blew through all his money, right? Like, he did have a bunch at one time, and he just ran His through net it. worth was 50. I think now it's one. So, yeah. He was mm -hmm. he yeah. was he was set for life, and now it's, you know, it's, it's dwindling away. I mean, I'm sure In one... In such cases. Yeah. It's sad, too, because he's, you know, he was so talented and really funny, but, you know, yeah. that just happens. I think part of it is he yeah. just, he got too famous too young, and he was just stuck in that lifestyle, and he never had to grow no, as a that... person. That's actually another good example of what you were talking about, of, like, wanting to be conspiratorial and stuff. Because I remember when the stories came out about, like, oh, his, um, uh, what, what did they call it when, uh, when they thought that woman was stealing all his mm -hmm. money? So people were saying that he was a part of a, uh, like, conservatorship, like Britney Spears. Conservatorship, and like that's it. Up. Yeah. yeah, and I, I remember when those conspiracies came out, I wanted to be like, oh, man, what a crazy story, you know, Bam's having his money stolen by this. But like you pointed out in your video, it's like, no, nah, that just, that's not what happened. I feel that way a little bit about the Britney thing. Now, I, I'm not super knowledgeable on it, so I feel like in my head the idea of a conservatorship is a bad idea. But then I see the way she behaves now that she's free. Like she's she's clearly fried out of her mind at all times. It's like maybe this person needed someone to be like her guardian or something. You know, yeah. whatever the cause was. It's like this is not a mentally fit person. I don't think they give conservatorships lightly. You know, I, I don't know a ton about that situation. I'm not emotionally invested, so I could be totally talking out of my ass and sounding like a dickhead right now. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Conspiracy theorists are dumb. Never believe them. They're always wrong, guys. Listen, don't question anything. Um, JFK slipped and fell on a banana peel, and it was his own fault. So that's the that's the real story. <laughs> what are you working on lately for videos? Do you, can you reveal a little bit about that or maybe not? Yeah, yeah. So I've got... Let me think. The next video that's going to go up is likely going to be... I haven't recorded it yet, but it's going to be a video about a uh, video game called Faith. The Unholy Trinity. Okay. It's an indie game that is, it's done in like um, like a 8-bit kind of old arcade pixelated style uh, with these cool rotoscope animations. And it's the story of an exorcist who failed an exorcism and now it counts become the best. And it's a really cool story. Uh, and I like, I love the way the game's made. I played it on stream a while back and never got around to making a video about it. But I think I'm going to do that now. Uh, so it's a story analysis of that game. And then the next video that I'm really pumped for is a video on a book called House of Leaves. Have you heard of it? Um, it sounds vaguely familiar, but I don't think I know anything about it. Okay, so House of Leaves came out in 2000. Uh, it may have been 2001. It came out like pre-modern internet, like, you know, early web 1.0 and stuff like that. And the original story was found in pieces across various websites, uh, like early message boards and stuff like that. Mm. And the author of it, effectively created one of the first ARGs of sorts, like, you know, pieces being found here, uh, different stories found in different places that ended up connecting to each other. And eventually he compiled the entire thing into one book known as House of Leaves. And if I had to describe House of Leaves, it is the first, I can't think of one that would predate it. It is the first use of liminal horror as like its own medium. So like okay. things like the back rooms, you know, so the whole uncanny. It's like a pioneer, you would say. It, it, 
It's the first, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds interesting. You've done a lot of the book review stuff lately. I saw your Blood Meridian video. I listened to it all the way through, and it kind of scared the shit out of me, but it was a good video. Um, <laughs> is that like a kind of a direction you want to take, like in the near future, just for videos in general? Yeah, yeah. Like, I really love, you know, storytelling stories like that. The story of House of Leaves centers around a family who the husband discovers that his house is an inch no sorry it's a quarter inch bigger on the inside than it is on the outside which of course is impossible right like it makes sense if your house is a bit longer on the outside because there's insulation and walls yeah. and you know stuff like that but it doesn't make any sense for it to be bigger on the inside he begins to become obsessed with figuring out this discrepancy he invites experts in he gets different tools keeps trying to figure it out and then from there the house starts to expand it develops new hallways new rooms Ooh. and it's, like i said it's like early back room like a proto back rooms but the story is told as if it is a found footage film that doesn't actually exist, but was viewed by one man who wrote the story down and like his memory of it on paper. But then that guy died. Uh, he became an old man. He went blind, died in old age. And then another guy found he finds his writings and records all of them down for us to read. But in the process begins to lose his mind. And the same thing that entered the household in the found footage film begins to enter his life. Oh, so it's wow. like a weird multi-layered like you'll be reading the story and then it will randomly cut to the guy documenting it explaining how he has seen this thing happen in his life when did this come uh, out and then it'll jump back, like uh 2000 okay so it's not that old but it does predate all this current it, it, it predates stuff. like internet war yeah yeah i feel like that it, was it, a thing in old um old movies i used to watch or something i feel like there was something about, like expanding houses and like rooms that weren't there or something it, it's very twilight zone-esque yeah uh and i think it gave like it gave way even if a lot of people don't recognize it it was one of the early founders of a lot of you know internet horror as we know it now but yeah it builds on a lot of stuff that already existed in horror media stuff like that that's cool. Um, nice. But yeah, I, 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 lo I love House of Leaves. It's a great story. But to answer your question, I loved doing videos, like you said, like the Blood Meridian video. That video did very well. Uh, so now I want to do one on House of Leaves. But I want to I want to make it a bit more technical. I want to maybe get like some voice actors for some parts. I want to use some more visual elements, like incorporate the green screen more so than I did in the Blood Meridian video. The Blood, Mer Blood Meridian video was a test run in a lot of ways. But yeah, like you were asking i would love to make more videos about stories like that was like it like mind-boggling to see that like you caused like a studio to want to pick up that story for a movie i don't know if i would directly take credit for it but it was very mind-boggling that happened at i mean the was same there time. okay was there any interest in that book though before your video like come on <laughs> not in a while uh there had been in like you know early 2010s and stuff like that but there hadn't been in a while so maybe it did i, I like do know that it definitely the had day... an impact on like the announcement at least I, I like to think so. Uh, the day I released the video, which was before the movie got announced, yeah. the day I released it, it jumped to like number, it jumped to number one on Amazon on their bestsellers list. Right. And was there for about a week. So that was very humbling to see, especially because this all happened like a week or two before Cormac McCarthy died, which was very humbling because- I wonder if he saw it, or if he knew at all. Yeah, that's, that's what I ask myself. Like, not to like, you know, sanctify myself to some ridiculous level but i do wonder if he might have seen it before he died uh, because possible. then that would probably be the last thing he saw his story do before death yeah uh which, which is very humbling to me because i can trace my love of stories and writing and all that directly back to reading the road in high school Right. Uh, so I don't know. Like again, I don't want to like think of be too pompous or anything. But there's a part of me that likes to think that he started me out on the path of storytelling, and maybe one of the last things he saw was a contribution back to him in some small way. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's not that conceited to think that you probably had some effect on that. Oh, what the? F right, as soon as I pull up my gun, they f merc me. Are you kidding? Oh, the other Transformers gun is over. Nice little story. No, that's cool though. That's a nice story. Uh, that's, that's, that's somewhat heartwarming, I would say. Yeah, I'm about, I'm about to die. Yeah, I'll be there. Yep, I'll be there in just a sec. We'll get six again. <laughs> God damn it. All right, well, you want to go do your thing, and then we can reconvene? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, I'll go do my stuff here, and then, uh, I'll be back on with Kayla later. Okay, cool. That yeah, just, just DM me whenever you're around. Cool, sounds good, man. See ya. Take care, buddy. And if you liked this video, consider becoming a member. For $5 a month, you get access to exclusive podcasts, unreleased videos, and the members-only Minecraft server. Thanks so much to all of my YouTube members who fund my content.